Indira Gandhi passed away. So I think Arthkan can't yet deny that they had anything to do with it. So their scheme was not accepted. Okay. Uh, we heard from the from the opposition and their suggestion that this was a scheme which obviously A was designed to bankrupt the opposition before the UP elections and as you now suggest had a, a US hand also in bankrolling or supporting the credit card industry. We, we heard from the opposition, now I have a dharam sankat as to how to invite the government next. I would have normally invited Mr. Sinha but he is now, he is the opposition with it. Okay. So we'll, we'll invite him last. And I have with me uh, Jai Panda, who should be technically the non-BJP, non-Congress opposition, but his party has suspended him. So he's in an amorphous position. But presumably from his writings I have seen, he's a broad supporter of demonetization. Jai Panda, why don't you respond to what you've read in the book? Because the book is a stringent critique of demonetization. Thank you. Thank you, Rajdeep. Actually, if you read my writings, they've been broadly consistent for the 12 or 14 years that I've been writing in the national media. So, uh, I don't want to attribute my writings to have a particular political slant. No, I didn't say that. No, I, I just I, said... I, I'm, just I, I'm not... I agree with you. I'm just clarifying No, I wasn't blaming you. I'm just clarifying where I stand. Uh, having said that, uh, it can be unpopular in uh, many circles to say anything positive about demonetization. And I suspect today is one of those occasions uh, where I don't think there is much appetite for anything positive about demonetization. Especially when a book as well researched and written as this. And I must compliment uh, Mr. Arun Kumar because I have had a chance to quickly read through the book. And it marshals the facts and the arguments against demonetization uh, in a most comprehensive manner that had not been done so far. So, compliments on, on that. But having said that, I, I must admit, Rajdi, that I have mixed views on demonetization. Uh, yes, it did disrupt the economy. And it was always going to. Because uh, when you take 86% of the cash out, of the, of the economy, irrespective of whether it's black, white, anything, it is going to disrupt. The question at that point was, how long would the disruption last? Some of the more uh, strict or more trenchant critics domestically predicted that it would, at least on GDP growth terms, would have an effect much longer than two or three quarters, uh, whereas many ratings agencies like S&Ps and PUAS predicted two to three quarters. Now, you've, you've assessed one aspect of how GDP is measured, but apples to apples, if you use the same measure, it does seem that the GDP growth rate did turn around in two to three quarters after taking a dip. That doesn't mean there aren't problems, because uh, you rightly pointed out that a large chunk of the economy is in the informal sector. And willy nilly it is being dragged into the inside the tent and followed by uh, followed with GST implementation with all its initial teething troubles that are still continuing in some sense. Uh, it has impacted the economy. Now, you can argue that this shouldn't have been done in such a certain, certain manner. It should have been phased out over years, which, which you have argued, and I think there is something to that. But there can be another point of view, which is that incrementalism has not solved our black economy problem, and that some harsh steps were necessary. Now, to say that this has not had any impact on the black economy is something I don't agree with. Because I have First of all, in spending a lot of time in the constituency, I average about 12 days a month, by the way, in the constituency. And I have anecdotal stories from which I estimated that those businesses which are heavily into the cash collection model, which would include real estate, it would include the for-profit engineering colleges and, and similar education sector, and it would include uh, businesses like the gems and jewelry sector, I have been writing and predicting for a year that these would be hit. And they were indeed hit. Uh, also, many marginal businesses, which are these uh, really low-level uh, businesses which are not yet into the uh, formal sector, have been hit because some of these businesses have survived only on the margin that they make by not having to be part of the formal system. 
the taxes that they would have had to pay. Uh, little laundries, suppliers of sand, uh, things like that. Now, it's not going to be easy in the transition and you've seen the, seen the disruption in many ways. But the only point I'm making is that to say that it has had no impact on the black economy is not something I can agree with. Uh, the real estate prices are down. And I can cite examples not just from Gurgaon and Delhi, which you can too, but I can cite examples from my Kendra Bada, where poor shopkeeper told me that he was struggling to buy a piece of land, just a tiny little piece and very small amounts compared to urban prices, which he was never able to do. Every year the costs went up and he attributed it to the corrupt officials, the corrupt politicians, the corrupt um, uh, fixers in, in, in uh, uh, the constituency. And uh, this is the man who has subsequently been able to buy a tiny little piece of land uh, somewhere in the rice fields a few kilometers outside of Kendrapada town. Uh, if you are somebody that is buying real estate, if you are somebody that has uh, a check with which you want to buy a piece of jewelry, uh, uh, or if you are uh, uh, a seeker of a private, um, if you are a consumer of a private education institute, not a supplier, then the picture looks quite different. Now, again, I'm, I'm saying this very clearly, that I have mixed views. I think uh, demonetization followed by GST did in fact hit the black economy very severely. But also that it affected parts of the economy, such as the informal one, which may or may not be black, but are struggling to get into the net. Uh, so it's a, there are two sides of the coin that I want to look at. And uh, as I said, you can, you can take a view as to whether uh, it should have been more incremental over the next uh, few years, few decades. <laughs> but as you yourself pointed out, incrementalism has not worked in the past couple of decades. So uh, a swift kick to the shins, perhaps you can argue, was necessary. Now how do you deal with the uh, post-demonetization and post-GST situation? Jobs are indeed uh, a big issue. But here I posit this. I posit that jobs are a problem that have been there for quite some time before demonetization and before GST. And in fact, it's not just an Indian problem. If you look at uh, the kind of crisis that job creation is facing, whether we have 6%, 8%, 9% growth rate today, the same numbers will create fewer jobs than those same numbers 20 years ago. This is because of automation. This is because of uh, artificial intelligence. This is because of a variety of other reasons. So we have a, dare I call it a secular jobs crisis, which is a structural one, uh, which any government will have to deal with. Neither this government nor the next couple of governments are going to be able to solve the jobs crisis anytime in a hurry. So we have many other challenges to look forward to. I just want to conclude by saying, one of the arguments I have been championing is a universal basic income precisely for this purpose. There are many economists uh, around the world, uh, Pranav Bhattan of uh, Berkeley, Vijay Joshi of Oxford and, and several others who have argued that the UBI can work in India to use the Tendulkar line of uh, distributing a thousand rupees uh, per individual, uh, which would have a dramatic effect on rural um, disposable incomes and rural livelihoods. Uh, this is something I have argued as at least the interim solution for a jobs crisis for a decade or so. Uh, that's a totally different argument, but to, to say that the jobs would have been very dramatically different if we didn't have demonetization or we didn't have uh, GST, uh, I'm not entirely convinced by that, though I concede that the disruption has had an effect on all of this. Thank you. Thanks very much, uh, Jerry. Professor Nair.